All right, so if we look at this handout, basically on one side, um, I have some that are um, labeled so that you can see this is the highlight, the middle tone. The middle tone is usually the natural color of the form. Um, your core shadow is the furthest area from the light source, so obviously it's gonna be in the dark. And then every time you have a rounded object, uh, object like the, um, like the sphere, like the cone, and like the cylinder, okay? There's always going to be a little bit of reflected light by the edge, the curved edge, where the core shadow lies, okay? So the core shadow never goes right to the end. Okay, so our first um, one is going to be, um, well, for today, the class is gonna be working with their stomps, like I said, and it doesn't matter what order you do them in, whether you do hatching, cross-hatching, blending, or if you do blending, hatching, cross-hatching, it doesn't matter, as long as you have a row of each and that it ends with a cylinder, okay? So the first one we're gonna do together is the um, blending, and we wanna split the page into 12 sections because there's going to be 12 all together including our um, spheres so i'm going to go ahead and just bend my paper into 12 sections again so i'm going to lengthwise i'll fold it up okay and again okay and then i'm going to again measure my paper it gives me about 21 and a half centimeters across. So every like seven and a quarter, I'll mark. And then I could just kind of bend on this dotted line, if you will. And that'll give you three equal sections. Okay, again, you could just do this using your ruler and um, measuring it out to get 12 equal sections, but I find that this is the really quick way of doing it. And then I'm just gonna take my pencil and divide my sections. All right. So rather than doing it this way, I think because I'm adding the cylinder, right, I'm going to do four, four, and four, I'm actually going to turn my paper to the horizontal layout, okay, kind of to, to landscape as opposed to profile because that gives me four, four, and four, okay? So my first one is going to be the cube, and I'm going to use what I learned today practicing illustrating my cubes, okay? And just really lightly, I'm going to freehand a square here. You can use a ruler if you feel like the ruler will help you make your square look much neater. Okay, so we want the same square, but up and over. So I'm just going to take this corner and bring it in. And then I'm going to draw this side parallel with this side, the bottom parallel here, the top parallel here, and then just connect. and you want to keep your lines nice and light.
All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pop in the rest of my forms. So the next one is going to be a cone, and I'm going to do an ellipse at the bottom. You're going to try to keep your ellipse symmetrical, so if it helps, cut it in this way and down the middle this way. Make sure that it's relatively symmetrical, all four quadrants. Okay, then you're going to find that middle point and bring it up. And then you're going to connect your top to your corners. And you can use a ruler to clean it up if need be. Okay, so then just go over the lines that you want to keep. And you can erase the ones that you no longer need. And of course, we're going to pretend that these are um, somewhat opaque. So we don't need to keep all of those interior lines, including the cube, actually. We want to make it look like an opaque cube, right? So technically, we're not even going to see these inside lines. Okay, so we're going to see the front face. the top, and this side here on the right. All right, my next one is going to be a sphere. So I'm just gonna make my point in the center here and kind of pick a radius length. And I'm gonna go around and sketch a light circle at roughly the same radius. If it helps, you can actually take your ruler and decide, okay, if my radius is gonna be, say, one inch, okay, you could just move your ruler around and mark a one inch radius all the way around at different points. Okay, that's another kind of helpful tip for drawing a perfect circle. And then you can kind of, using a light line, connect those points so that the diameter is perfect all the way around. And then just darken it up, touch. Okay, and the last one is going to be a cylinder, so we need a bottom ellipse. All right, and again, to make sure that the ellipse is symmetrical, we can cut it in half this way and cut it in half this way, and just make sure that your quadrants look symmetrical. Right, and that halfway point on both sides is the point where your lines extend. So you're going to do a straight line up this way and a straight line up this way. Just keep them very light for now. And you're going to try to mimic this ellipse at the top. Okay, to the best of your abilities. And then erase what you don't need anymore. So again, we're gonna pretend that this is a solid um, opaque object, not translucent. So we will see the top of it. We won't necessarily see through it to see the base. Okay, so basically, you, if you want, before you even get started, you can draw your three cubes, your three cones, and your three circles, and then your three uh, cylinders, um, if you'd like, or you could do one at a time and then fill them in as we go. Again, the top one that we're doing right now in class is blending, so I'll label this one 
blending. The second one I'm going to do is going to be done um, in hatching. So for the second one, I'm going to label it hatching. And for the last one, I'm going to label it cross hatching. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this video off right here and then in the next one, we can start filling in the first row using a blending stomp um, and blending. Again, if you don't have a blending stomp and you're working from home, you can use um, just your fingertip Fingertips aren't ideal because the oils from our skin sometimes um, blot the graphite and make it clumpy and uh, a nice wooden uh, blending stomp like this, just make sure that your, your sheeting is nice and con consistent throughout, okay? So again, you can find one of these at Walmart in the arts and crafts section. Um, and I believe that Michael's definitely has them as well. Um, in terms of other local shops, I'm not sure. But again, um, if you don't have one and you can't make one, your finger is the backup.